Morale Evolve will fill in for Jimmy back, <laughs> co host of Force Cast. <laughs> <laughs> it's your big chance, so Morale. I read children's stories in that voice. I don't know if that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Little Miss Muffet sat on the chocolate. <laughs> It's story time with Uncle Morallo. Uh, <laughs> it is, you know. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner. Oh. All right, that's funny. <laughs> you know, Stephen Sand, of course, the voice of Morallo Evolve from the Clone Wars. One of the more disturbing characters, I think, to emerge from the, the whole Star Wars galaxy, quite honestly. Yeah, I don't want to know where that part of Steven's brain is that he tapped in to get that voice, but he is definitely <laughs> a creepy dude, and the idea of him reading bedtime stories is even creepier. But guess what, folks? It's a reality. <laughs> Steven <laughs> sent it. He sent us this piece of audio. I was like, what the heck is this? Bedtime with Morallo Evol, episode one. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, we came up with the idea last week on the show. Steven was probably up all night. He couldn't sleep. He, he was workshopping this in his mind. And the next day, this shows up in our inbox. Masterworks Theater presents Bedtime Stories with Morallo Evol. <laughs> Hello, kiddies. This is your old friend, Moralo Evol, with another bedtime story. Oh, this is one of my favorites. It's called Little Miss Muffet. <laughs> Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider, and she ate him, too. <laughs> mm, you have to admit, it makes you hungry, doesn't it? God, where's my dinner? Well, until next time, kiddies, this is Moralo Ival saying good night, and don't let the bed bugs bite. This has been Bedtime Stories with your host, Morano Evol, from cell block 23H. Ask the song. Wow. <laughs> Man, try sleeping on that tonight. Mm. If every weird idea we conceptualize here on the Forest Cast became reality like that just did, yes. it would be a very different place. It really <laughs> It really would be. That was great execution. My goodness. Yes. Great execution. Moralo Evol returns with another bedtime story. Masterworks Theater presents Bedtime Stories with Moralo Evol. Ah, oh, it's so nice of you to come visit your friend Moralo Evol in his incarceration. Are you ready for another bedtime tale? Well, snuggle up and get your cup of hot cocoa ready, for tonight's tale is called... The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. Mm, she reminds me of that irritating do-gooder Duchess Satine. The Knave of Hearts, he stole the tarts and took them clean away. Good lad. The King of Hearts called for the tarts and beat the Knave full sore. The knave of hearts brought back the tarts and vowed he'd steal no more. The king and queen then ate the tarts because they looked attractive, and both would perish in 24 hours because the snacks were radioactive. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think those imperious nitwits got exactly 
exactly what they deserved. And the knave was very resourceful. Moralo hmm, Evol will have to find out what cell he's in for my next project. Well, it looks like it's time for lights out. Moralo Evol would like to wish you all a good night as you toddle off to slumberland. Especially my good friends Mackenzie and Emily. Until next time, this is Moralo Evol wishing you sweet dreams. This has been Bedtime Stories with your host Moralo Evol in the kitchen making cookies for the warden. <laughs> now, is it just me or is there something not right with that guy? <laughs> something, something not right with Moralo Evol. And he's always be always baking cookies for the warden. He's passing yeah. around bottles of the barbecue sauce. What? He's got, a, <sighs> he's got a culinary bug, I guess. Masterworks Theater presents Bedtime Stories with Moralo Evol. Ah, hello, my pets. I'm so glad you stopped by to visit your bosom pal, Moralo Evol. It's been rather lonely since my cellmate accidentally rolled out of his bunk and out the window three <laughs> stories. You know, they say the most dangerous accidents happen in the home. And speaking of accidents, Moralo Evol would like to talk to you today about those pesky do-gooders, Jimmy Mac and Jason, and that exasperating pro-Jedi propaganda machine they call the Force cast. Uh -oh. Well, Moralo Evol has written a special poem warning you, my dear listeners, about the dangers of their sly indoctrination. And it goes something like this. Jimmy Mac and Jason were at the con to fetch themselves a story. Jason set up the microphones while Jimmy tracked their quarry. We just want to ask you a few questions. Will you accommodate our request? Certainly, answered their innocent prey. I'll try to do my best. The questions came one by one, seeming never to cease. Hours went by as the inquirers probed and their captive begged for release. Just one more query, Jimmy lamented. I hate to appear uncouth. Yes, said Jason, about last week's episode, we need to know the truth. About Kitster, Maul, Quadraneros, and Peg, we know you're holding back. And action figures, comics, and novels, don't try to throw us off track. The Inquisition continued on about Horsehead, the EU, and Sith. Is there really a Pablo's pawn shop, or is it just a myth? Did Han shoot first? Does Jabba like girls? Does carbon freezing make you sterile? Give it up, don't hold back. Withholding information puts the Republic in peril. Their question is stammered, stuttered, and flailed, amazed at their cunning and guile. You never heard us say this, said Jimmy, but you know resistance is futile. Their thirst now quenched, they sent that poor devil back to the convention floor. They packed their bags, backed up their tapes, and headed toward the door. And so, my children, when you're at the cons and see that mic, think fast. <laughs> Just turn around, make haste, and run, or you may end up on the force cast. <laughs> That's rather didactic and apropos, don't you think? Well, kitties, that's all we have time for tonight. Until next time, this is your old pal, Moralo Evol, saying, Sleep tight and don't let the bed bugs bite. 
This has been Bedtime Stories with your host, Marala Weevil, Poet Laureate of Cell Block 23H. Oh, fantastic. Brilliant. Bravo. Ah, Stephen Stanton does not disappoint. <laughs> Boy, I, and I thought last week's uh, sucker thumb tale would be hard to top, <laughs> but he comes through with something customized for wow. us here at the Forcecast. Boy, he's been to uh, or at least heard a number of our interviews, hasn't he? I mean, he knows all the <laughs> <laughs> the man speaks from experience, yes, my friend. Well, that's true. <laughs> he that's certainly true. knows what it's like to be uh, grilled by us. Yeah. But that was great. Thanks, Stephen. And thanks to Morallo. We always appreciate whatever Morallo can do for us here on the Force Guys. Hello, my friends. This is Morallo Evol. And today I heard one of my guards say, May the Fourth be with you. Hmm, sounds very suspicious. Morallo Evol suggests you be on your guard the whole day. Masterworks Theatre presents Bedtime Stories with Marallo Evol. Freeze or I'll blast you. Oh, I'm sorry. Marallo Evol didn't recognize you in the pale moonlight. I'm glad you could make our little mm, rendezvous. Being on the run makes it so hard to put together these play dates. But I'm told this safe house up ahead can offer shelter from those over-eager constables that would like to send your poor, innocent Uncle Morallo back to the pokey. Let's see if anyone's home, shall we? Come in, it's bloody open! Good evening, my friends. I was told that a weary traveler might find shelter here for the night. This is a book club, not a motel six. Yeah, speaking of which, what are we going to be reading tonight? I brought my mail. Why don't you read your mail in the bathroom like a normal person? <laughs> it's mostly coupons. It won't take long. I brought Jedi Forces. Look at this picture of Calgon in it. Isn't that cool? That's a coloring book for children. <laughs> it's okay. I brought Crayola. We're not going to be coloring and it's stupid, Jim. Yeah, but look at it. It's a big box. You know, the one with the sharpener? <laughs> so you know, I'm allergic to purple. They're not for eating, you lackwit. Some of the colors do taste better than the others, though. <laughs> you know, I'm also allergic to Formica. It's crazy, You're but... both crazy if I have to go over Gentlemen, the... gentlemen, please. This bickering is pointless. <laughs> Allow me to read you something from a book that I brought. Whoa, that's a big book. It's a big story, and it's called <laughs> The Tale of Cruel Frederick. Here is Cruel Frederick, see? A horrid, wicked boy was he. He caught the flies, poor little things, and then tore off their tiny wings. He killed the birds and broke the chairs and threw the kitten down the stairs. And far worse than all beside, he whipped poor Mary till she cried. <laughs> Sounds like a night I once had in Monte Carlo. No ad-libbing, <laughs> please. The trough was full and his little dog, Trey, came out to drink one sultry day. He wagged his tail and wet his lip when cruel Frederick snatched up a whip. He whipped poor Trey till he was sore and kicked and whipped him more and more. At this good Trey grew very red and growled and bit Fred till he bled. Then you should only have been by to see how Fred did scream and cry. Man up, boy. 
So Frederick had to go to bed. His leg was very sore and red. The doctor came and shook his head and made a very great to do and gave him nasty medicine too. But good dog Trey is happy now. He has no time to say bow wow. He seats himself in Frederick's chair and laughs to see the nice things up there. The soup he swallows sup by sup and eats all the pies and pudding up. <laughs> the end. Wow, that was very disturbing. Well, at least you didn't need crayons. I liked it. Can I get that on my Kindle? We're looking into it. In the meantime, Rollo Evol hopes you all learned a little lesson about the folly of going to... It looks like there's more people coming for the book club. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he's right. Laura, we're going to need more Pop-Tarts. <laughs> FYI, I'm allergic to the pink ones. I really must be going. Moralo Evol hates being a fish wheel. Good night, and don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> You know, we've got a back door, you barbarian! I don't know who is from Barbados. <laughs> this has been Bedtime Stories with your host, Moralo Evol. Coming soon to the Kindle and Nook. <laughs> oh, excellent. Excellent. Oh, I tell you. They were all there. All of them. All of them there for that one. That, that was star-studded. And when we say all of them, we mean... We mean Stephen Stanton. That's all you need. He's a one man, uh, a one man band there. One man wrecking crew. No doubt. That's great stuff. So you know, Stephen, he's he's connected there. He's, uh, I, I think he's roommates with Morala, uh, cellmates, I should say. <laughs> these days, uh, they're intimately uh, uh, acquainted, intimately uh, close there in their uh, tight living quarters. And, yeah. Uh, well, big. But th- thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. That was classic. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Masterworks Theatre presents Bedtime Stories with Uncle Morallo. Hello, my friends. You must be very quiet. Your Uncle Morallo is currently stowed away in a transport that was docked outside that so-called safe house I was forced to evacuate last week. Mm, I've been in worse hideouts, but the provisions here are decidedly lacking. The only foodstuffs I've been able to scrape Rounds together in this dump or something called circus peanuts and a disgusting <laughs> beverage labeled Old Spice, which gave Uncle Moralo a bad case of dyspepsia. But every seasoned fugitive knows that being picky about your grub when you're on the run can have disastrous consequences. As you too will see in today's story, titled Augustus and His Soup. Augustus was a chubby lad, fat ruddy cheeks Augustus had, and everybody saw with joy the plump and hearty healthy boy. He ate and drank as he was told and never let his soup get cold, till one day he began to bawl, I do not like this soup at all, just take the nasty stuff away, I will not have it, no, I say. Hmm, must have some old spice in it. (laughs) Next day, oh, the picture shows how lank and lean Augustus grows, yet though he feels so weak and ill, the naughty fellow cries out still, not any soup for me, I say, just take the nasty stuff away, I will not have it, no, I say. The third day comes, oh, what a sin to make himself so pale and thin, yet when the soup's put on the table, he screams as loud as he is able, (laughs) 
Not any soup for me, I say. Just take the nasty stuff away. I won't have any soup today. The fourth day came, most dreadful thing. Augustus was like a piece of string. A quarter ounce he weighed, they said. And on the fifth day, he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you see, kiddies. That's what happens when you become a finicky eater. <laughs> so remember, if you want to grow up big and strong and go on the lamb with your Uncle Moralo, <laughs> always eat your circus peanuts. <laughs> Good night, and don't let the bed bugs bite. This has been Bedtime Stories with your host, Uncle Morallo, searching desperately for a bottle of Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> uh, great work, as always, by our dear, dear Uncle Morallo. You know, I thought his constitution would have grown much stronger having to deal with all that prison food. Of course, he had the sauce in prison. That was- <laughs> That's the sauce. Zaz. <laughs> I'll tell you, Morello Eval. That's a that's a character that just keeps giving back. <laughs> he just keeps giving back. Somebody <laughs> asked if this is canon. If we can accept hmm. the fact that, you know, Morello is out of prison. He broke out, he's out on the lamb. So yeah. I mean, do Uncle Morello's bedtime stories become a certain level well, of canon? I, I you know, Jim, we've we've talked about this before. There's multiple levels. There's there's the there's the GU. That's the the film universe. Uh, there's 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 the the TU, which is the television universe, and then there's the Force Cast. It's it's the big F U, uh, in, in in canon. And I'd like to think that Uncle Morallo is part of just the big F U. Pass the sauce. <laughs> big thanks to Stephen Stanton and the crew behind. Uncle Morallo's Bedtime Stories, really taking a life of its own. There's uh, videos available for all of the tales you've heard here on the Forcecast. Look for the video of this week's tale, Augustus and His Soup, coming mm. soon to Forcecast.net and Stephen Stanton's YouTube channel. Very cool stuff. I noticed something in last week's uh, tale was... Uh, a sort of a nod to another mm. Stephen Stanton character, one that he... He debut his his personal debut on the Clone Wars was voicing, of course, Captain Tarkin, and I right. noticed that there was a little nod to that character in the last episode of Uncle Morallo's Bedtime Stories, the tale of Cruel Frederick. I don't know if anyone else caught this. No one else brought this up. I was shocked that no one else kind of caught hmm. this. But uh, let me just replay that part right here. Gentlemen, please. This bickering is pointless. This bickering is pointless. Hey, it's like a little <laughs> Easter egg in there, isn't it? It's a little e- Easter egg from Uncle Morello. So, uh, well, you know, it's, of course, the, the connection is there with Stephen Stanton there. He's sort mm. of holding the strings of all these characters. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, he, there's a little mashup there, a little Stephen Stanton Clone Wars character mashup going on. And it flew under the radar for the most part, but didn't get by me. Not by you. No, not at all. Well, big thanks to Stephen Stanton and uh, Uncle Morallo. And I'm sure we haven't heard the last of uh, Uncle Morallo on the lamb, as he calls it. And <laughs> Jim, I, <laughs> well, you know him as Morallo of all. We call him Uncle Morallo. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know he's the kind of character you just want to crawl up on his lap and hear a good story. No, no, no he's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we we have uh, the latest Uncle Morallo bedtime story right here, and this is uh, Christmas 2012 edition. So let's everybody everybody get together around the fire. All right, everybody there, get your eggnog, uh huh, get your fuzzy slippers, and let's listen. To a Christmas tale from Uncle Morallo. Masterworks Theatre presents The Night Before Christmas with your host, Uncle Morallo. 
Greetings, younglings. Your old Uncle Moralo is enjoying some quiet time on this very special evening. Is it Christmas yet? Does Santa Claus come? Can we open our presents? Calm down, Jubby. It's still the night before Christmas. Yeah, the three wise guys haven't even shown up yet. (laughs) That's debatable. Gentlemen, why don't you all sit down, pour yourselves a hot cup of cinnamon old spice, and I'll tell you the story of the night before Christmas. Whoa, whoa, hold on. R2D droid, get over here. Uncle Moe's telling a story. Next time I night. Shh. All right, we're ready. <clears throat> T'was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. And bring me a genuine Darth Maul lightsaber with motion sensor action. Oh, you'll put your eye out. He's right. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Ma in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. I didn't know there was a Mrs. Morallo. Shh. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. You probably ate too many sugar plums. May I continue? (laughs) When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. I had eight tiny Lego Jawas till my dog thought one was a milk bone. (laughs) What? More rapid than eagles, his reindeers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. If it was my sleigh, I'd have a few more Vixens and a horsehead rebel fighter. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. Next time I night! Hold up, you hadn't given us our presents. Boys, please. <laughs> a bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. Well, sounds like he's been dipping into the old spice, too. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. You know, my Aunt Myrtle used to do the same thing. It was kind of repulsive. (laughs) No more interruptions, please. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team, gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Wow, you know how to make that story even better? It needs more cowbell. <laughs> Bazinga! Give us your cowbells! Oh, eat your circus peanuts. Ah, yes, Christmas is indeed for children, and I have plenty of them here tonight. This is your old Uncle Moralo and the book club wishing you all a very Merry Christmas. Sleep tight, and don't let the sugar plums bite. This has been Christmas Stories with your host, Uncle Morollo, who reminds you that no matter what you get for Christmas, don't put your eye out. Uh, if that doesn't give you nightmares <laughs> on Christmas Eve, I don't know what will. Uh, excellent work, as always, oh, from our good friend. <laughs> now, 
you know, and, and, and I, cause again, again, I have to always make it about myself. Um, <laughs> No, you know, I did a uh, a night before Christmas for you guys a, yeah. a few years back, and I don't know if you remember. To tie it back to Stephen, in that that was the only time I have ever slipped, uh, as far as giving out information, and and nobody caught it. But in that one, I made a reference to Tarkin, and yes. that was because I had been in the studio oh. for months with Stephen doing Tarkin, and. Oh. But it hadn't come out yet on the show. It was still like what you know, a month or so away yeah, from right. being revealed. Was that a little a uh, hint, or was that? Uh, yeah, because oh, I, mean, I forgot you, know, you didn't I, know that when I produced it. I thought, well, you know, the thing is, 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 you know, Tarkin's a Star Wars character. So mm-hmm. Nobody's going to think much of it. Obi Wan's talking about Tarkin, but later, of course, it made more sense because now we know him as as young Tarkin, you know, right. voiced mm-hmm. stupendously by the brilliant Stephen Stanton. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, it was kind of one of those things where I went, oops, I guess I probably shouldn't have made a reference to him yet. Well, we're glad no, you, you did, and it went over my head. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I figured you guys didn't catch it. I thought, okay, then it's fine. 